Just a quick reminder before we get into the lesson to download the hands-on lab exercises that accompany this full CCNA course. I'll include the link in the description. Also, remember to subscribe and hit the notifications bell so you don't miss any of the lessons in the course. Okay, let's get into it. In this lecture, you're going to learn about iOS configuration management and the running configuration and the startup configuration. So I'm going to make some configuration commands to demonstrate this for you. I'm going to go to global configuration. So I enter config T. Notice right now that I've just got the default set up in this example where the host name is router. If I enter the command hostname router1 and hit enter, you'll see that the hostname changes immediately. So in iOS, whenever you make a change, the change takes effect immediately. When you make the change, it goes into the running configuration, which is the configuration that is in effect right now. But as well as having the running configuration, we've also got the startup configuration. So running config is the config in effect right now. The startup configuration is the configuration that will go into effect when the router is next started or rebooted. And commands that you entered in the running config do not get saved permanently until you explicitly copy them from the running configuration to the startup configuration. So you can see here, I entered the command hostname router1. That went into the running configuration immediately and my hostname was immediately changed to router1. But if I now do a show startup config, oh, and notice my not so deliberate mistake, I'm at global configuration, so I can't enter a show command. I told you you'd make that mistake a lot, right? I still make that mistake too. So I'll hit control A and make that a do show start. And let's do tab completion to check what the command should be. So the full command is show startup config. I'll hit enter. And notice here that the host name is still router. It hasn't changed to router one. So in the startup config, it's still host name router. If I now do a do show running config, I can see in the running config that the host name is router one. So if I now reloaded the router, it would come back and the change would not have taken effect. Now, this is actually deliberate because it allows you to back out of mistakes. Say if I made some changes on the router and I made some catastrophic changes, but I hadn't saved it yet, the easiest thing to do is to just pull the power out of the router and then plug it back in again, boot it up, and it will come back with the configuration that was already on there before I'd made those changes. Now, obviously, that's a fairly drastic thing to do. It requires a reboot of the router, so you would only do that as a really a last resort. Okay, so I've changed the name of my router to router1 in my running config. I haven't copied it to the startup config yet though, so it's not going to be persistent across a reboot. To do that, the command is copy run start. And again, I'm at the wrong command level, so I'll end to drop back down to the enable prompt. To do your copy run start command, you have to be at the privileged exec mode. So I can now do a copy run start. It'll ask me the destination file name I want to save it to. Pretty much always we're going to accept the default here and just hit enter. It will take a few seconds to build the configuration and I get the OK message telling me that yes, it's been copied to the startup config. So if I now do my show startup config command again, you'll see that the host name is now router1 in there as well. So it's permanent. If I reboot the router now, it's going to come up with that as the configuration. The next thing I want to show you is how to back up your configuration. Now, Cisco do have tools like Cisco Prime Infrastructure that can be used to automate this from a centralized server. That's not tested on the exam, by the way, but you can also back up manually as well. The way to do that 
is I'm going to copy the running configuration. I'll hit the question mark now to see where I can copy it to. And you'll see one of the options here is flash, which is flash memory on the router. So I can do a copy running config to flash and I have to give it a file name when I do this. So I enter a colon and I'll call it my dash config. I'll try to do it without a typo. There we go. It'll say what do I want the destination file name to be. Yes, I want it to be called my config and I've now backed up my configuration to flash. To verify that, I can try a show flash and there you see I've got my config is in there. If I wanted to restore from this backup, the way I do it is by copying it to the startup config and then rebooting. But when you do a copy, it's going to actually merge the commands rather than replace. And typically, I would want to replace the entire startup configuration. So the way I do that is first off, I erase the startup configuration. So I enter the command erase start. It's telling me an incomplete command. So let's use the context sensitive help to help here. I'll hit the up arrow space question mark and it tells me unrecognized command. Okay, this is because I'm working on an older router here. So in an older router, the command is write erase and that will tell me it's going to erase the NVRAM file system, which is where the startup config is saved. Do I want to confirm? I hit enter to confirm that and that will erase my startup config. I can now copy flash colon my dash config to the startup configuration, confirm that, and I would now reboot the router to come back up with that configuration. Now, hopefully you're thinking it's not a very good idea to back up the configuration to flash on this router because if the entire router blows up, I lose the router and I lose my backup as well. It's always a bad idea to back up a device to the same device. You want to back it up somewhere else. So the easiest way to do that would be to copy the running config to a TFTP server. So I enter copy run TFTP and hit enter. It will then ask me for the IP address of my TFTP server. Let's say this is at 10.10.10.10. .10 .10 .10. I hit enter. Then the name of the file name I want to use Let's say I'm going to use router1-config and then I could enter today's date in here. Say that that's a date and hit enter. And it will then connect to the TFTP server and back up the configuration there as a text file. I'm getting an error message because I don't actually have a TFTP server in the lab here. But while I'm saying that it will show up as a text file, another thing you might wonder is, okay, how do I check what the actual contents of my backup are? If it's safe to flash, the way you can do that is using the more command. So I would enter the command more and then a space and then flash colon my dash config and that will print out here what the contents of that configuration file are. The last thing that I need to tell you here is where the different configuration files are stored. Now for the device to boot up, it needs to initially load the iOS operating system image and that is stored in Flash. Once the operating system is up and running, then it will load your actual administrator configuration from the startup config and the startup config is stored in NVRAM. That's non-volatile memory, so it's persistent across a reboot. The running configuration is stored in normal memory in RAM and it's loaded into RAM memory from the startup config when the device boots up. Okay, that's it. See you in the next lecture. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to get the complete course ad free right now, then you can click on the link above my head or in the description to enroll in my CCNA Gold Bootcamp. It also includes full study notes quizzes and 150 pages of additional troubleshooting labs you can't find anywhere else.